How are you? Ready to get started? Well, that's good, because we have ourselves a uh, very interesting uh, set of approaches uh, when it comes to treating psychological disorders. We are going to open up with the psychodynamic and humanistic approaches uh, for treatments of disorders and begin with psych the psychodynamic approach, which stems from the work of Sigmund Freud, who we've heard about in, in, in a couple of di different iterations uh, across the CLEP uh, prep course. So Sigmund Freud, uh, in the late 1800s, began to receive a lot of uh, patients uh, seeking his counsel. He was trained not as a, as a psychologist or psychiatrist, uh, as there were none formerly in that time, uh, but he began to uh, see uh, pa patients um, and, and apply theories of what he felt were um, emotionally uh, um, centered theories and um, began to theorize that the problems that people were coming to him with, whether it be depression or anxiety, or some people even coming in saying they had neuroses uh, or um, uh, not being able to feel their arm or suddenly being blind, and he found that the root of their problems were these um, uh, underlying aggressive and sexual urges, which we spoke about in the personality uh, module. And he began to use techniques like free association, which is um, when a person basically um, begins to freely express the first thing that comes to mind. So uh, they may just uh, unfold with, you know, I had a hard day today, and Freud might say, what were you feeling today? And they would say, uh, I was at work and I saw my boss. And then he would ask, what did you think next? Uh, I thought my boss was not in a good mood. What did you think next? And they would go on and on and on until he would get to a point where um, uh, something from that unconscious mind would be revealed. Something that had been repressed might come up to the surface. And in this way, Freud believed that insight and awareness would be developed. Doing so, according to Freud, was, a met, was his approach at resolving past conflicts that had developed in early childhood. Uh, and he also would depend on a uh, technique known as dream analysis, whereby he would be uh, asking patients, did you have any dreams that prior night uh, or in the past? And when the, dream, uh, when the dream would be expressed to Freud, he would interpret the dream and say that there are two levels of the dream. There was a manifest content and a latent content. And the surface level content was only one level of the dream, but underneath that was the deeper level, the deeper content of the dream. And so that was uh, some of Freud's techniques, including as well the notion that through insight and through this long um, uh, psychoanalytic process, catharsis could be reached. Catharsis is, a, is, a, is an emotional cleansing. It's a freeing up of all of that bottled up psychic energy that was located in the depths of the psyche uh, that would liberate a person and make them feel um, emancipated and, and free of their um, psychological symptoms that uh, they would come to Freud with. He noted that oftentimes in therapy, people would um, uh, bring resistance to the work. They would resist wanting to let go of whatever it is that they were holding on to in the depths of their unconscious. And Freud would interpret, let's say, a patient coming late to a session or not showing up to a session or saying to him, I have nothing to talk about today. And Freud would say, that is resistance. And this is a technique that even still till today, psychodynamic oriented therapies are utilizing to help bring about catharsis and breakthrough resistance in therapies. In addition, psychodynamic therapies are interpreting uh, and understanding the defense mechanisms that come up. And we have already spoken about these as well in previous modules. Things such as repression or denial or reaction formation or projection, 
uh, and other tools that the ego uses to protect itself, a psychodynamic therapy would interpret those and try to understand what is their meaning in the context of the work that we're doing here. Next we turn to the humanistic uh, uh, style of therapy and the humanistic approach to uh, 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 alleviating symptoms in um, psychopathology. The humanistic school uh, is most known for the work of Carl Rogers and Abraham Maslow. Maslow we've talked about in terms of his hierarchy of needs. Carl Rogers uh, is most known for contributing a, a style and approach of therapy known as client-centered therapy. And in Rogers' client-centered therapy, the therapist would engage in what he called active listening, which is a method of listening to a, a client speak and actively engaging in the dialogue with them, reflecting back what you heard from a person. So if they may say to you, uh, I'm feeling very anxious today because I've been preparing for my exam and I really don't think that I'm going to pass because I don't think I'm studying enough. The therapist might say, so I'm hearing you say that you're quite anxious. You're anxious about an exam that you're studying for because it seems like you feel like you haven't prepared enough. So all the therapist did was really paraphrase back in an active listening manner so that the client says, Yes, that, that is what I said. That is how I'm feeling. I'm feeling anxious because of this and that, and I know that you're now paying attention. Um, and this, by the way, is in opposition to the analytic approach, which would have in the traditional setup uh, a therapist sitting behind the patient, the patient on a couch, the, the therapist doing much more listening and only uh, guiding people through conversation, um, but not as much of an active listening stance. Slight differences, and in the dynamic world, there are a myriad of different subsets. So we, we don't want to narrow it down, but for the sake of this exam, uh, we are kind of generalizing here. And getting back to the client-centered therapy approach, um, the client works with the therapist in a collaborative way to make interpretations. So it's not simply and exclusively the therapist that makes the interpretations of, of the situations, but the client as well. Uh, in this modality, self-awareness and self-acceptance are the goal, and they result in personal growth for the client, um, and very much so the notion of unconditional positive regard, which also is a concept we've uh, spoken about several times already, um, whereby there is n uh, it's a non-judgmental environment that the therapist is uh, creating, and this non-judgmental environment is one where there's an unconditional positive sense that is given from the therapist. We, we unconditionally support you and believe in you and, um, and uh, in that way uh, a client is able to feel um, that there's no judgment standing in the way of them achieving their uh, self-awareness and self-acceptance. Okay, so that brings us to the end of the uh, humanistic and psychodynamic approaches. We'll touch on a few more approaches in the modules to come.